Hey guys, Todd from Lowbrow Customs here again. Well, while we were doing our last uh, tech tip video for springtime maintenance, uh, we discovered the brake pads on this Sportster were pretty much worn out. So today, we're going to do a real simple, quick tech tip video on how to change those brake pads. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to compress the pistons in the caliper because the new shoes are going to be much wider than the worn out ones. So the, so the piston, there's four pistons inside this caliper and they've all moved out to take up the space for the pads being worn down. So if we were to just pull the pads out and try to stick the new pads in, they won't physically fit because of the pistons sticking out. A good tool to use for the job would be a putty knife or I actually have a little uh, pry bar here that I'm going to use. A putty knife, you can tr kind of use the sharp edge and get underneath the brake pad in the disc and you're just going to pry it over until you see the pistons move in. But before we do that, what we can do is we can just take some brake clean and some compressed air and we'll clean some of the dust out of there. That way it'll be easier for the pistons to go back into the bore. Okay, so we'll spray some brake clean. Those two holes there in the area where the pistons ride and then we'll give her some a little blast of air like so clean up our desk a little bit and let's go ahead and take our pry bar or whatever you have and start compressing that. And you can also come from the bottom, do the same thing. All right, so I gotta get the inside pistons compressed too. And this other, this pry bar I was using on the outside is a little bit too large. It's hard to get behind the, the disc. So I have this smaller one. Once again, a putty knife actually works better for this job, but I don't happen to have one. So we're making do with what we have here. But at any rate, we just need to get that behind the pad and get those pistons compressed any way we can. We're going to take a quick look here and make sure they're compressed. Okay, outside one looks good. Inside one looks good. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to take these two pins out. And I'll show you on the brake pads here that we're putting in here. Here's our new brake pads. These two pins go through those two holes. Using a quarter inch on my quarter inch, on my quarter inch, I'm sorry, quarter inch ratchet I have and a quarter inch nut driver with a quarter inch socket, 12 point mind you, if you look at the heads of those, uh, it needs to be a 12 point. That one wasn't very tight. And I'll show you what these look like when we get them out of here, how this kind of works. Well, it doesn't kind of work, it does work. Once we get the pins out of here, you'll see there's some threads. And did you hear that little clicking noise? You probably didn't hear that, but it just made a little clicking noise. Nothing to be alarmed about. Okay, so once you've got all your threads showing, you're just going to grab your pin and pull it out. Like so. Oh, and look at that. The pad fell right out because I compressed the uh, pistons. The other one's still stuck in there. It's kind of hanging up just a little bit. There she comes. Bada bing, bada bang. Also important to note, note the orientation of these pads. See how it's got that shape on it? That's going to be the inside one. Match them up to our new pad. Inside one outside. 
You can see where the pistons are riding on those. And you can see that they, they had a little bit of life left on them, but not very much. You can see that one's would be down to uh, running metal to metal very shortly here. Not gonna last very long. So this is definitely time for new brakes. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take some of that brake clean. I'm gonna clean these pins off. And I want these to be nice and clean for two reasons. One, we wanna get all that brake dust out of there. And two, we're gonna put some of this pin lube on there. This comes with the Harley Davidson brakes. And I just happen to have some in my toolbox and uh, we'll go ahead and lube up the pins here. Get a little pin lube on her, both pins, lube them up. If you don't have any pin lube, you can probably get some from your local auto parts store because automotive brakes, some automotive brakes. Oh, we already did that one. Let's do the other one. Bam, all lubed up. Now we're gonna go ahead and slip the back one in first and then we'll put the front one in and then you kinda gotta push up on it while you slide the pins through the hole because those have to engage through those holes. Okay, before I put the pads in, I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean the disc up a little bit more than I already did. because you can see, the edges of it, pretty dirty. Since we're putting new pads in, we want that disc to be clean. See, so look at that, dirty. Clean her up. All right, so it's imperative that your pistons are all the way in when you go to put these on. If you, I'm gonna go ahead and put the inside one on first and you should be able to slide it along the disc behind there and get it in place. Pull it up in there. And if it's not sliding in between the disc and the caliper, then you need to make sure, get those pistons all the way compressed. Actually, I had this piece of metal in my toolbox that worked out pretty well for that. So you're gonna get that all the way in there, like so. And you can also look down these holes right here and see where you're at. Okay. You can also look in here to see where you're at. And I can see that this one's lined up pretty good, but this one's still down a little bit. So I'm just gonna reach from the behind it and push it like so. And now I can see it's just about there. Okay, I was kind of having a hard time pushing it up from the back and getting it completely aligned. So it is acceptable to just stick a screwdriver through there and slightly just carefully push it up. Now I can see through those top holes that that pad is engaged up into the caliper where we'll be able to get the, yep, look at that, beautiful. And the other thing too, if you look at the pin, you can see the end is, is tapered. So when it's going in, it can engage that one. Okay. Once again, outside pad. Slide it in like so. Once you're able to muscle that up in there, take a look. Yep, there she is starting to come in the hole. You can use your screwdriver again to pull it up in there. And now I can see that it's all the way up. Then go ahead and reinsert your pins. And see how that slid right in there? Once you've got your pins lubed, pads aligned, go ahead and uh, tighten those down. Those pins are allowing the pads to float back and forth on them as you're hitting the brakes. Click. Click, make sure you torque those, factory spec. That's it. It's not the easiest job in the world, but there's no reason to pay a shop to put those brake pads in when, you know, it's a job to get the pistons compressed, but once you've got those compressed, the pads will slide in easily. Use your screwdriver to line them up, put your pins back in. And this brake was used on a lot of different models. It wasn't just the Sportster. The big twins used the same style brake. Now, 
since the pistons came way out for the wear on the old pads, I'm guessing if we open the master cylinder right now, there's gonna be some excessive fluid. So we'll go ahead and check the brake fluid. Uh, one other thing you need to do anytime you're messing with brakes is before you take your bike for a ride, pump that pedal a few times on the lift because if you've compressed them, you need to send that fluid out. So we'll go pump it first, then we'll check the fluid level. That baby feels like it's got gobs of brakes. Harley thought it would be a good idea to put this pipe right up against that master cylinder. I don't know why the heck they did that. Could have moved it up this way a little bit so it would have been easier to check your fluid. So we're gonna use a quarter inch wrench to get that rear screw out because you just can't get, they put a Phillips slot on there for a screwdriver but I don't think that's ever gonna work. So we'll just use this wrench, loosen those two screws for the lid. Once they're loose, they should come out pretty easily. The other thing I've noticed is a lot of times when uh, the fluid level drops down because of the brake pad wear, uh, there's a rubber diaphragm in the, in the lid and it'll drop down, so you might want to push that back up. We'll see what's going on here in a second. Let's see if we're taking an exhaust system off to get a lid off or not. Oh, look at that. We got it. We'll leave that screw in there because we don't want to take it out. It might not go back in. Have a rag handy. And wow, look at that. The level is just about perfect. There's the rubber. Oh, this one didn't drop down. But uh, the level's perfect now that the new shoes are in there. I'm sorry, pads. This is not drum brake. This is disc brake. Shoes. I'm sorry, pads, pads new pads. Always observe if you're adding brake fluid to any motorcycle, always observe what it says on the lid. Do not mix dot three, four, and five together. They don't like each other. That'll screw everything all up. This one says dot five. We don't need to add any. You can plainly see the level is very nice. It's perfect. We're good to go. Put our lid back on. Brake service done. Got my lid tightened down, don't crank it down too hard. Just tighten her till the gasket just pooches a little bit. Brake service done, new pads, clean my disc, pumped up my brakes, check my fluid, and go for a ride, woo!